Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate that you are here. And in order to also express my appreciation for your subscription to the channel, your comments in the channel, if you don't have a private account, your name goes on the list, and if I can't see you, then know that my Dendrobium hibiki also blooms for you. In this series, which I've had going since I started my channel, I knew from jump that I wasn't going to be able to do giveaways, and I also knew that sometimes giveaways only apply to one winner. I am in Europe, southern Spain to be specific, which makes it even more restricted as to how to do a giveaway globally. Anyway, having had all those thoughts in my mind back in the day, how could I express my appreciation to everyone? I decided that my blooms will do the talking for me. And right now, screaming at us in all its beautiful glory, with the psychedelic colors, are the blooms of my Dendrobium hibiki. There's two now, but up until October 2022, it was one big pot. So for everybody that is not mentioned in this episode, this spectacular blooming, if I may say so myself, is dedicated to all of you that are watching, that have watched, or even if you haven't subscribed, I ask you please to do so. Stumble across this video and it is your first time here. Thank you to you as well for being here. However, there have been some blooms in the collection in the past that I have dedicated and I will showcase them and call out individuals that have come up on the list and match those with the blooms. But before I get there, this is important to me. There's a group of people that are supporting the channel in an even extra special way, and they are members. We call them Orchid Ninjas here. And the Orchid Ninjas have an orchid of their own, which is Phalaenopsis Cornusurvi variety Chatala Day. She has been blooming beautifully for them throughout this year, I have to say, despite losing two spikes, she is still doing her gorgeous little charming, cheeky, smiley blooming thing for the Orchid Ninjas. And I want to say a very special heartfelt thank you for your extra support on my channel. It means a lot. It goes a long way. It is because of your support that I actually do get a little something something from YouTube at the end of their pay period. So thank you so, so much. And here's another little hint, hint, nudge, nudge. If you are not an Orchid Ninja and would like to support the channel in that extra special way, please take a moment consider becoming an Orchid Ninja, hit the join button, which you will only see after you have subscribed to the channel, and consider yourself welcome to the gaggle that is in the background of Ninja Orchids. Now, I know that all this is very long-winded, so once again, thank you to everybody that is not mentioned in this episode. Know that if you have not been mentioned yet, this is an ongoing episode, and you will probably be mentioned sometime in the near future. Let's have a look-see at what has bloomed in the past on the patio and whose names have come up. Oh, I am so grateful for Dendrobium orchids, <laughs> especially the ones that bloom profusely with lots of blooms because it allows me to get into the list of names that I have and make a nice little dent into it. So, Dendrobium polyanthum bloomed for Linafa, El Giorgo, Paola Miloslavic, Jojo de Bobion, Dusty Old Man Old Man, Panagiotis Beretsikis, Remy and Raminta Laurinaitite. So you wonderful grouping of people that are supporting my channel, this orchid bloomed for you. And let me tell you, she smells of licorice. If you're into sugary licorice, the licorice candy, it's not the pungent, raw, intense, let's say, licorice fragrance. It's pretty pleasant. Personally, I do not eat licorice, but the smell of this orchid with the licorice and the sugar, mm, yeah, I'm having me some of that. It is absolutely delicious, and she permeates with her fragrance my blooming alley. Sometimes I get a little bit spoilt <laughs> because when she is in bloom, some other deliciously fragrant dendrobiums are also in bloom, so it smells like a candy store in my blooming alley during that time period. 
and she adds that extra kick of spice with her licorice fragrance. I want to thank all of you for your support on my channel. I know that some of you in this grouping do not come from the orchid community and that makes your support even more valuable in my opinion because you're here subscribing to the channel even though the subject matter isn't in your category. I do appreciate that support as well. As they say, it takes a village. Every little helps, but the little is so huge for me. I don't even consider the word little valid in this point. That is how grateful I am for your support. So thank you to all of you so much for that. My Dendrobium polyanthem is doing fabulously. She was mounted on cork this year just because I was noting a little bit of rotting at the base of the canes and it, uh, I wasn't feeling too good about it. However, I have a feeling that this is what this orchid does. It, it could just be a form of natural propagation and it would just drop a cane somewhere and then continue to grow with keikis. But needless to say, she is doing fabulously. For the year of 2024, we've got approximately nine, if not 10, and canes growing. I'm not rooting around in there too much because I don't want any of them to snap off. They're pretty delicate in this phase of their growth. So whatever happens as she hardens off, we will soon find out. But she is looking like a bushy bit of gorgeousness and doesn't appear to have skipped a beat from being mounted. I thoroughly enjoyed these blooms. White is my jam. Orchids plus white. Give me some frills. Give me a little bit of pixie dust sparkles. Give me something shredded around the petals and sepals little bit of shredding on the lip, I'm all over it and polyanthem truly delivers. So this gorgeous blooming in the year of 2023 goes to all of you, which includes Linafa, El Giorgo, Paola Miloslavic, Giorgio de Bobion, Dusty Old Man Old Man, Panagotis Beretsikis, Remy and Raminta Lorianitite to say thank you so so much for being here. I hope you're doing well in your part of the world and I hope you know how much I appreciate you. I would love for this list of names to be much longer with this orchid, but I didn't get two leads to bloom. I only got the one lead to bloom. I'm not going to blame the orchid. I'm going to blame my winter conditions. <laughs> not enough light for this super duper highlight requiring orchid to bloom on both leads. But the fact that she bloomed for us on one lead, I'm pretty impressed. I'll take it. And I hope that you will take it as well. Mags McGuire, Donna Warlick, and Edwina Orellana. Now in Spanish, the double L would be pronounced as a Y. So if I'm mispronouncing that Edwina, please let me know in the comments. I do not mean to offend. It could be Edwina Orellana. Either way, know that my Lelia Zip bloomed for the three of you to say thank you to the three of you via these gorgeous, gorgeous contrasting blooms for your support on the channel. But what is remarkable about the fact that the one lead did not bloom, it is the first to already push out a new growth, almost as if in defiance to say, <laughs> don't count me out just yet. Not that I'm expecting that to bloom later in the year, definitely not, but it is always wonderful. And that is why I am such a promoter of cut the spikes to an orchid to promote a new growth to come sooner seeing as I am running out of time when it comes to new growths maturing in the conditions that they prefer as opposed to what happens during the winter and what they have to endure so to see this new lead saying I've got you covered I'm sure that this would be the one that will bloom for us in 2024 and it is the lead that we're looking at and gawking at right now that is in beautiful bloom it's probably the one that will not bloom in 2024 and so it goes it swings and roundabouts with orchids but for the time being let me just say I was grateful to my zip that she did bloom otherwise as your names came up I would have been a little bit lost as to which orchid is coming up next and nope it was Lelia zip and she came through Mags McGuire Donna Warlick Edwina Orellana, thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. My Lelia Zip Blooming of 2023 was for you. I hope you're doing well in your part of the world.
When Rapiculus Lelius bloom in my collection? <laughs> There's cartwheels around the patio. When a Rapiculus Lelia increases in her bloom count from one year to the next, there's double cartwheels around the patio. However, because the blooms are so tiny, Lilia Kushnir, these Rapiculus Lelia blooms, they bloom for you exclusively just because of their size. As massive as these blooms are in my heart, <laughs> visually, in reality, they're not more than three centimeters. So Lilia Kushnir, my Lelia Gracilis, she blooms for you to say thank you so much for supporting me on this channel. I make no bones about it. Rapiculus Lelias are just <laughs> my kryptonite amongst other things, but yes, these are so precious and special to me. So when I saw that in 2023, she grew two spikes and last year in 2022, she was a first time bloomer. Mm -mm -mm. Very, very happy with the progress and development of this orchid. We're going to have to work a little bit on that moss around the base when we head into fall, but for now, she is just doing fabulously. So, Lilia Kushnir, Small things come in big packages, and that is my Lelia Gracilis. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. She bloomed for you. Oh my goodness, the fact that this orchid bloomed so soon after having had a massive wound, repotting and all that nasty stuff that we have to do in the hopes of saving an orchid back in October 2022. And then she bloomed on time with a new growth without any issues, strong enough for three gorgeous blooms. I am so pleased to dedicate these blooms to Natani Seven and Yuuko. She is the darkest of my zygote. Petalums. I have two others that have a lot more green in them and the depth of the color purple isn't as deep and rich. Oh, the Luisendorf. Oh my goodness. It is a very rare occasion that I see this one in garden centers and even though she was in a very sorry state when I bought her, I thought this is a chance that I am not going to get that often and if I'm going to try and attempt to rescue her, then we are golden for the years to come. And it turns out, as you can see, the result is evident. In this blooming, she wasn't as intensely fragrant as are my others, but you know what? <laughs> don't mind, don't care. <laughs> so I can't exactly say, oh, what a delicious fragrance, etc. No, her fragrance was very mild, maybe under the circumstances that she has been dealing with in the past. It is possible that it will increase and intensify in the years to come. We have to wait and see about that. But for now, there was just a mild rose fragrance that I could detect nothing out of this world, nothing that would blow your socks off in any way, shape or form, except for the colors and the depth. That blew my socks off because when this orchid was blooming, I was still wearing socks. <laughs> And because the camera will not reflect the depth of the color of this orchid when she is in daylight while I was filming her, I took it upon myself to take shots when it was late, late afternoon without the sun influence, without the white facade reflecting, and I got the true colors of this orchid in photography. And yeah, mind blown. So you, Natani7, and you, Uko, my Louise and Dorf, she bloomed for you, and what a proud blooming that was. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. Look at this gorgeous Prostechia radiata. So subdued. There's nothing loud about her, nothing shouting at you. But the fact that she has these attributes of delicacy and trying to hide in the bushes, that is a statement. I love that. She smells of honeysuckle. She smells of beautiful sugar. It's not intense. It just floats in the air. She's super long lasting, a super reliable bloomer, a vigorous grower, a vigorous root grower. There's nothing I can't say about Prostechia radiata that I don't like or appreciate. It's just incredible. And then with a little bit of sun on it, her blooms also sparkle. And we still don't know who these blooms are dedicated to. My bad. Sorry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Lori Collins, Sarah Rossi, and Mampui Lal Nun Kluangi. My Prostechia radiata, she blooms for you. 
as a massive thank you to you for supporting my channel. It is so much appreciated. Now, don't get me wrong. I love having loud, colored, spotted, bright, intricate orchid blooms. I love all of that. But then there's one that comes along with the chartreuse, a little bit creamy, a little subdued. It could be in a meadow. You would just walk by it. You wouldn't notice that it's there. It's not calling for attention. It's just beautiful. Even the fact that she blooms upside down. I think that is just so quaint. <laughs> She rides out my winters beautifully and does this. I really can't expect a lot more of an orchid. Her new growth has almost matured. It's just go, go, go and grow, grow, grow with this orchid. She went into Lekka and self-watering like she's been doing it all her life. Fantastic. Highly recommend. But for your support on my channel, my Prostechia radiata blooms for you. Lori Collins, Sarah Rossi, and Mampui Lai Nuntluangi. Thank you to all of you so very much for your support on my channel. Know that I appreciate all of you very, very much, and I sincerely hope that you are doing well in your part of the world. If you're in the summer like I am while filming this clip, then I hope you're enjoying yourself. And if you're in the winter, well, let me tell you something. By the time this clip airs, it's probably that time for me that I have to say, oh, I'm dreading the winter and it is around the corner. But either way, thank you to to the three of you for your support here. You're appreciated. For all of you that don't know him, this is Siliano. This is my gala cockatoo. And he is currently in his jungle gym enjoying the late Spanish afternoon. We had a little bit of a shower today, but he wasn't opening his wings. Hey, he wasn't opening his wings, so I didn't film that. But just to include him every once in a while, I know that some of you enjoy seeing him. I want to say thank you so, so much for watching this video. Once again, thank you all of you for your much needed, much appreciated support. I'm ever so grateful to every single one that is here. Once again, may I just ask you to subscribe to the channel and if you would like to also like the video, YouTube likes these kind of things and I appreciate you for that as well. Siliano and myself are gonna go inside now. He needs to get his dinner. <laughs> He's dried off sufficiently. I wanna thank you so much for watching. I want to also wish you a beautiful day, but I do want to attach a condition to that, that you please stay safe. Take care, bye. Come on, wanna dance? Good bird. Good bird. Good bird. Oh, and stretch. I know, that was a lot of activity. <laughs> and another stretch. Okay. Oh, phew. Are you done? <laughs>